Is bikes online worth it? Depends. Can you fix a bike? What is up guys and welcome back to another video. I recently purchased a brand new bike from bikesonline.com. I did a lot of research on them. I did a lot of review reading, a lot more than I would have liked to do. And um, you know, there's like a mix of good and bad reviews, just like any company. Most of the bad reviews had to do with um, you know shipping damage, um, parts missing, your usual stuff. So I decided to go ahead and I ordered a 2021 Polygon Vander T7. On their website, it says they could take up to five days to ship the item, which is a little weird to me. I don't know why it would take you five days to ship an item, but I figured you know it had to do with their free $99 professional bike setup. More on that later. But no, it's literally just as long as it takes them to actually physically get the bike from their warehouse, build it, and then ship it out. They don't work on Saturdays or Sundays, so the process could be a little longer if you do order your bike midweek. Finally, the bike did ship, and I got a delivery date. Sadly, FedEx dropped the ball and uh, missed it by a day, which is really not a big deal because it did show up and it was undamaged. I took it to my shop and I opened it up and started assembling the bike. Inside the box, right when you open it, they include a little box that has you know various tools like your torque wrench, the bits for the torque wrench, pedal wrenches, reflectors, a bunch of other stuff like that. The bike was very well packaged and I was very surprised by that because of how many bad reviews there are on bikes not being packaged well and being damaged during shipping. Mine was not one of the bad ones, so I thought. So I started to assemble the bike, putting a mix of the parts that came with it and my own parts that I bought previously to upgrade some of the cheaper stuff that this bike came with. I got it fully together and I started running through the gears, you know, just to check everything and I noticed that they don't shift good. It would not go all the way to 12th gear, it would not like to shift to second, it's very delayed, and when you would click it to shift up, it would skip three, four gears at once. This takes me back to the $99 professional setup that they flaunt all over their website. I started adjusting everything and I quickly noticed that something was not right with this bike. I noticed that the rear wheel was bent and wobbling and I noticed that the cassette was moving up and down. Not good. So I removed the wheel assembly to see what exactly was going on with this. So I had the wheel on the bench and I'm spinning the cassette on the wheel itself and I noticed that it's bent wobbling up and down so I removed the cassette to see if maybe it was the axle or the hub bent or something like that and it spun straight so put the cassette back on and it continued to you know wobble again so that really you know verifies that that was actually the cassette that is damaged but one thing I also noticed when I was taking the cassette off the wheel is that the cassette lock ring was not tight at all and you know that's not a big deal for me because I could I could easily torque that myself. You know, I have the torque wrench for 40 Newton meters, all that stuff, but it wasn't tight. I barely, barely had to use any pressure and it just came right out. So it's not a big deal to me, like I stated, but what about someone that doesn't know how to work on a bike? Someone that has no mechanical knowledge whatsoever, you know, that, that could easily damage the whole cassette on them and then their bike is out and down. Any professional bike mechanic would have, you know, easily known that something was wrong once they couldn't index the gears. You know, I did everything. I set the B gap. I set, I took the shifter cable out and retensioned it. I tried indexing everything and nothing worked. So that led me to believe that something was wrong, which I found out was a warped cassette or an off drilled cassette or something along the lines with the cassette. That right there tells me that their $99 professional setup isn't really a thing or they have a mechanic that has not a clue in the world what he or she is doing. I reached out to them and submitted a warranty request and they got back to me within two to three days or so. They made me send them pictures of the derailleur, the, the wheel, and all the damages, my serial number, everything to verify that this is actually my bike. I purchased it, you know, just to show them all the damages. About four days later, they got back to me and here's what they said. The part you need to be fixed or warrantied is not made by Polygon or Entity. The best way to make sure you get back to riding in a timely manner is to visit a local bike shop and have them contact the company directly. We are happy to take care of this for you, but it will take longer to resolve. Yes, I understand that. You know, I understand that a SRAM 
SX 1x12 drivetrain is not made by Polygon or Entity. That's obvious. It's made by SRAM. But you think they would have this stuff on hand since they're quote unquote building these bikes professionally for the customer before it goes out the door. Anyway, here's the rest of it. If you decide on working with your local bike shop, I can authorize $50 for the services on the bike as we discussed shifting, rear wheel, and brake service. I don't know what they're talking about with brake service. I never had any issues with my brakes. If the repair is going to cost more, please let me know before the work is completed as we may not be able to fully reimburse you and we'll need to help with another solution. $50 is not a lot of money to get this fixed. You know, thankfully I know how to do this, but $50 is not enough. You know, you're talking you have to get your wheel trued. You have to get the whole drivetrain reset up just to get this to shift correctly, plus possibly even get the part replaced if it is considered bad by SRAM. 50 bucks is nothing. And if they expect me to pay money to get this fixed, which is not my fault whatsoever. I have video proof that this thing does not shift right out of the box. You know, that, that is annoying. I fully respect their customer service and, you know, they got back to me in a decently timely manner. You know, that, that's, that's okay. I respect that. But it's just the back to the excess of $50 thing. That is not, not good. That's just not something like... I sell you, say I sell you a car and then you come back to me a week later and say, hey, the brakes are bad on this car, but you just put a state inspection sticker on it. And I go, oh, well, you could fix that. You have to pay for that because that costs too much for me to reimburse you. That's not how it works. You can't do that. That's that's not right. Luckily, I have the almost same exact gear set on my Trek. Uh, it's an NX 1x12, it's not an SX, it's the better version, but I was able to take my SX cassette off of the polygon wheel and put my NX cassette back on it. Within five minutes, I had this thing working great. You know, it. I indexed all the gears, and let me get to this, the B gap wasn't even close to correct, it was not set one bit. It's like they took the derailleur out of the box and just bolted it on the bike and that was that. It's not, it was not good. It, this whole process, it was just upsetting to me. You know, I might sound like a little baby complaining about this, but like I spent a lot of money on this thing and I expected it to work. To set your B gap on a full suspension bike, you have to set the sag, okay? So I'm running 25 millimeters of sag on the rear shock. So you have to depress that bike down to 25 millimeters of sag. That's like as if you're sitting on it and then you have to set your B gap that way. Do you think that they're doing that? They are not doing that. They're just bolting it on, probably have a set measurement that they put on and then, then they're sending it out the door. That's, that's all they're doing. You know, I, I understand how this stuff works. Like, I'm not even a bike mechanic, and I figured this out in no time. I just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Now, this review isn't meant to knock bikes online, to talk badly about them. This is literally just me giving you a, a re real world review of what happened to me, what, what is currently going on with me. Would I continue to do business with them? Yes. You know, this is my first full suspension bike. I, I really do enjoy the bike. It is an awesome bike now that I set it up correctly. It is really, really good. It's just, man, it did leave a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth. I'm not gonna lie to you. I know how to fix my own bike, so a bad setup is not, you know, the end of the world for me, but bent parts, broken parts, missing parts, that's, that's a big issue, especially when you're spending thousands of dollars on a mountain bike. You know, that's, that shouldn't be. If you're spending that much money, everything should be there. Like, like I said before, these bikes aren't cheap. I really just think they should stand behind their products just a little bit more and get the quality control up there to par with a lot of these other companies. And maybe even, you know, authorize more money for repairs when stuff goes wrong in my situation here. Like, I'm gonna do my best to get this, you know, warrantied out with SRAM, but man, 50 bucks is nothing. Like, I would just rather pay that myself. I'm currently waiting for the response back to 
um, what I sent them back. I really don't want to, you know, put the emails on here. Just it doesn't feel right to me to do that kind of stuff. Keep it like, you know, on the down low, just between me and them. At the end of the day, I am very happy with this bike. You know, I took it on two rides um, after I got it set up and working correctly. And it really, really, really performs great. You know, they put nice-ish parts on this bike that you're not really going to get at this price point. And that even includes the geometry. Like the geometry on this thing is great. It has a 66 degree head tube angle. That's like pretty good. All of the stuff included is fantastic for this price point. I'm not here to tell you if you should purchase your bike from Bikes Online or if you shouldn't. You know, I'm just here to tell you my story. If you're interested in the Polygon Vander T7 or any of the other bikes that Bikes Online sells, I'll have them linked down below in the description. You can go check them out. That about does it for this video. And like I said before, this is not meant to throw any shade at them. This is not meant to demean them, talk badly on them. You know, their customer service is getting back to me. Whether or not that I like the outcome of this, they're still helping me. It's still trying to help me. You know what I mean? So this is there. I think they're a good company. You know, the bikes are cheaper bikes, but they're still expensive. So you should still stand behind your product that you sell. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.